In today's video, I'm going to go over six different example problems for solving distances and forces with the levers. And in a previous video, I made an introduction into what are levers and the three different classes of levers. If you're interested in that, you can link to that in the upper right hand corner of this video. Before we get started, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel, Step by Step Science. Get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Please subscribe, click the notifications bell, support my channel, give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment, and don't forget to share this video. And also, I made a bunch of other teaching and learning materials, which you can find on my Teachers Pay Teachers website, where you're looking for example problem notes, sample problems with the solutions, some puzzles, some online labs that you can do with the PHET simulations. It's all there. The link is in the description below. And let's get started. This is levers and a quick introduction. I think when we think about levers, this is the kind of teeter-totter seesaw thing we think about with levers, where we have a force here. And we can call that force the output force or the load. And we want to lift that object up by applying a force over here. And we can do that, and we call that the input force or the effort if we lift that up like that. Those are two important things you should know, the output force, the input force, and the load and the effort. And then we, of course, have the fulcrum. That's the pivot around which the lever turns. And then we have the distance from the fulcrum to each of the forces, which we could call one of those the output lever arm. And typically, we call it the lever arm. In this side, we'll call it the input lever arm. Now, in this video, we're going to be using torque to solve for the forces and the distances because we know when the lever balances, we have enough force to move something that the torque on one side is going to be equal to the torque on the other. And the torque is a force that causes an object to rotate about a point or about a pivot. A torque is just a force, but we give it a special name because it's a torque is a force that causes an object to rotate. And in this case, for our lever, it's going to be rota rotating around this point, which we call the fulcrum. Okay, the symbol for the torque is the Greek letter tau. It looks like a capital T, but it's actually the Greek letter tau. It's officially the symbol. And the torque, the way we calculate the torque, the torque is the force that is applied and the distance, and as you'll see in the examples we're going to do, it's the distance from the pivot, from the fulcrum, to the point of application of the force. And we can abbreviate that as the torque is the force times the distance. And the unit is the Newton meter. Now, it's not a Newton meter like a joule. It's a little different. We don't say joule. We just say Newton meter. And, of course, as I said, for the levers to balance, the torque on the left has to be equal to the torque on the right, or the torque from one force has to be equal to the torque from the other force, which we'll see that in the six examples we're going to go over now. And this is the first example. We have our pivot point. This is the equation for the torque, the force times the distance. And we have a lever here, and we have three books stacked up. And those books have a total force, apply a total force right there of 35 newtons. That would be our output force. And each mark on our lever here in this video is going to be 10 centimeters or 0.4 meters. So this is 0 0.4 meters away. And we want to know how much force would we have to apply in order to lift those books up. Now you can see we have the fulcrum in the middle between the two forces. So that means that this is going to be a first class lever where the F the force is between the load and the effort or the output and the input force like that. Okay, so we're going to get out our equation for torque. We know in order to lift that, hold that like that, the torque on the left has to be equal to the torque on the right. And now the torque we said is the force times the distance. Okay, and this is the force on the left times the distance on the left equals the force on the right times the distance on the right. The distance must be measured in meters and the force must be measured in Newton. Now, we want to solve for the force on the right-hand side. So we're simply going to solve this equation. The force on the right is going to be equal to the force on the left times the distance on the left. We just bring this over to the other side and divide by the distance on the right. Okay, now we know all of the values that we need, the two the force and the two distances, as I said, each mark on here is 10 centimeters, 0.1 meters. And so that means that we have 35 is the force on the left from those books, Newtons. The distance is 0 0.234, 0 0.4 meters. This is one meter away. And that means that in order, the minimum amount of force we would need to hold that, uh, that lever balance like that or to lift those objects is 14 Newtons. It's just 35 Newtons. 
times 0 0.4 meters divided by 1 meter gives us 14 newtons like that. Okay, that is example number one. We're going to do six, two for each class of lever. There's another first class lever problem because the fulcrum is in the middle. Now we have a, we're going to say this like a teeter-totter problem. We have a person over here. This girl weighs 30 doesn't weigh. She has a mass of 30 kilograms. And we want to know where this person would have to sit to make this lever balance. Okay, so the distance is what we're looking for, the distance on the left. We know the two masses, and we know one of the distances. So we're going to get out, once again, our torque equation, the left and the right, have to be equal. Now, we want to solve for the distance on the left. Okay, the distance on the left is going to be the force on the right times the distance on the right divided by the force on the left. Now, we need to put the force in here. The forces technically need to be in newtons, and we have given the mass in kilograms, so we're going to convert both of those using Newton's second law. So the force on the right is the mass times the acceleration due to gravity. So we're talking about the gravitational force is your weight, or in your weight is your force measured in newtons, and you get that that, would, that person would weigh or have a force, apply a force of 294 newtons, and the other person would be the same thing, multiply you get 441, so you can see they have a greater force. So what does that tell us about where they're going to be? It's going to be in closer, okay, closer than the, uh, the girl. And we can apply those numbers to the equation, 294 times 0 0.85. She's 8.5 spaces away. And divided by the weight, the force from the other side, and we get that that would be 0 0.57 meters. And that should make sense because this person has more weight, applies a greater force, so they're going to be closer, and they're going to be about 0. Well not, in this case, 0. 0.57, about 0. 0.5 uh, meters, okay, away like that, 0. 0.57. Okay, and that's the location that that person would have to sit on our teeter-totter to cause that to balance like that. Okay, any closer, and the teeter-totter would bend to the right rotate to the right and any farther away, and the teeter-totter would rotate to the left. All right, now we have the next one, and in this case, we have a different class of lever. All right, and this is a, a piggy bank, we're going to say. It looks like a piggy bank, and it has a weight, applies a force right there of 110 newton. Saved all your quarters, and therefore... You have a force right there at that position, 110 newtons. And we want to know how much force would we have to apply right here, okay, from this position to be able to hold that or to lift up that piggy bank like that, okay? And in this case, uh, we have that. We're going to call this force one, and this is going to be force two. Now, you can see we have the fulcrum is outside, okay, of the two forces. And the input force, excuse me, this is the output force, the output force is in the middle between the fulcrum and the input force that we're going to put in to lift that up. And that means that this is a second class lever because second class levers have the output force or the load between the force and the fulcrum. And so we are going to just get out our two uh, uh, torque equations here, our torque equation. And you can see we're going to have torque of one has to be equal to torque of two. We're not using left and right. We're just going to use the torque of one it has to be equal to the torque of the other. But still, the torque is just the force times the distance, like that. So we have force and distance one and force and distance two. And we want to know solving for force two. So we're going to solve for force two. It's going to be force one times distance one divided by distance two. And if we plug those numbers in, the force of number one is 110, and its location is 0.9 meters away. That's nine ticks away from there, 0.9. And this force is going to be applied 1.7 meters away, so we're going to divide them by 1.7 meters. And that means in order to lift this output force, this load, which has a load of 110 newtons, and we want to apply a force right here, we're going to have to apply a force of 85 newtons. Excuse me, 58 newtons. All right, this force is farther away than this force, so then uh, the force is going to be less from our input force. All right, we have another one for our second class lever, and for this one for our second class lever, we have a classic wheelbarrow right here. This is the pivot point right here for the wheelbarrow, and we're gonna put some things into the wheelbarrow, and we put a ladder, a can of paint, and a shovel, and we're gonna say that that force, the center of mass for those forces where those apply is right there. And we're gonna say that that, we're gonna call that force number one, that's our output force.
And we're going to say that's 165 newtons. And we want to know, and when we lift the wheelbarrow up, how much force do we have to apply to lift those objects up? What's the minimum force? And we're going to say that this is the pivot. This is the pivot. And the distance from the pivot to this output force, this being the output force, is going to be 0 0.3 meters, 30 centimeters. And then we're going to say that the distance from the pivot to the handle uh, where we're going to lift it up is 1.5 meters. And then this is, again, of course, going to be a second-class lever because the output force is in the middle between the pivot and the input force. So we have force or torques 1 and 2, which means we're going to have forces and distances 1 and 2 like that. And we're solving for force number 2, which is this force right here. And then we're going to say that force 2 is 1 times 1 for the force and the distance, divided by distance number 2. And we can plug those values in, 165 times 0.3 meters. We're going to take the force and its distance. And then we're going to take the other distance, and we can solve for its force. And that's going to be 33 newtons. Okay, so we would have to apply a minimum of 33 newtons to lift that object up for that situation like that. Okay, we have two more to go, and these are going to be third-class levers. And you can see we have a snowman here, and he's on our lever, and he has a mass of 37 kilograms. And we are going to say that we, or you, are can, can apply a force of up to 600 newtons. And we want to know where would we have to apply that force of 600 newtons in order to lift that snowman up with a mass of 37 kilograms. Now, this... In this case, the input force is going to be somewhere in here between the output force, the snowman is the output force, and our fulcrum right here. So this is going to be a third class lever. So we have force one, and we're going to call the force that we're going to apply force two. But once again, it's just force one, excuse me, force one. Torque one has to be equal to torque two. And it's the force and the distance and the force and the distance. And we're going to be solving for distance number one because we know the force number one and we know the force and the distance for number two. So we're going to be solving for distance number one. And we don't actually know the force. We know the mass. But once again, we can use Newton's second law to solve for the force. And that's 37 times 9.81. And that means that snowman has a weight or applies a force of 363 newtons. We can plug those values into our equation. 363 times 1.4, that's the distance from the fulcrum to the snowman, divided by the force that we can apply. And that tells us that we are going to apply that force at a distance of 0 0.85 meters, 85 centimeters away, is where we would apply that force to lift that object up. If we were to move this force in, then we would have to apply more force. If we were to move that force out, then we could apply less force to lift that object up. But that's the location of which we can apply 600 newtons. Okay? All right, now we have one more example, and possibly the most interesting example of, an, of them all, and that is how your arm is a third-class lever. So here's a picture of your arm. The bones in your arm, there's your shoulder, there's your upper arm, there's your lower arm, the two bones in your lower arm, there's your hand, and you have your coffee right there in your hand. All right, and the coffee is the output force. That's the force you're trying to lift up to your mouth to get your sip of coffee, so that's the output force. And then the input force comes from this bicep muscle on your arm, and it's attached right there to your arm, very close to your elbow, it's attached right there, that is the input force like that. So we have F, that's an I for the input and the output, and that muscle applies that force. And that, we could say the coffee has a force or a weight of 2.9 newtons, and the fulcrum is right there at your elbow, and the input force is in the middle, but not directly in the middle, but is between the fulcrum and the output force. So therefore, your arm, that's right, is a third class lever. And we want to know, because the input force is in the middle, and that's how we determine a third class lever. And we want to know how much force do you have to apply to lift your coffee up like that. And once again, we're just going to apply our torque. We have the torque from the input and the torque from the output. So we have force and distance for each. And we want to solve for the force from the input. And the force from the input is going to be the force from the output, the distance the output divided by the distance from the input. Now, just to approximate, well, we know the coffee, we said, is 2.9 newtons, your cup of coffee. 
And we're going to say that distance from your elbow, the pivot point, out to where the coffee is is approximately 41 centimeters or 0 0.41 meters. And the distance from the fulcrum to where the muscle is attached to, to your arm there, okay, to your arm there, to your lower arm, is uh, we're going to say 7 centimeters, which is 0 0.7 meters. So that means that if we multiply 2.9 times 0 0.41, divided by 0 0.07, our meters cancel, we get the force, and that means you have to apply a force of 17 newtons. You'll notice the force you have to apply is greater than the weight of the object, so the input force is greater. So that is a characteristic of a third-class lever when the input force is going to be greater than the output force. And the mechanical advantage will be less than 1, and there isn't really, therefore, kind of a mechanical advantage. Okay, so there you go. We went through six Excellent examples for two for each of the three classes of levers and how we use torque to determine the missing force or the missing distance. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you found the video helpful. If you did, please do all the following five things. Subscribe to my channel, Step-by-Step Step Science. Please support my channel. Uh, you should click the notification bell if you don't miss anything. Let's see, you can give me a thumbs up, leave me a nice positive comment, and don't forget to share this video. Thank you so much for watching. We will see you in the next video.